Hello ladies, gents and people of any other gender identities, I'm Psy Weapon and although video tutorials aren't really my thing, I'd like to introduce you to this great piece of software called Graphics Tool. Since apparently there's between zero and no tutorials for it in the internet. Graphics 2 is an image manipulation program geared towards indexed color image formats, such as pixel art, which is what I use it for, and any sort of art that follows the restrictions of arcane computers of bygone times, such as C64 art. Game Boy Art or NES Art. It's free, it's open source, it's powerful, it's light, it's available on more platforms that you can shake a stick at. It's a spiritual successor to digital painting programs from the Amiga era, such as Deluxe Paint and Brilliance, which I haven't had the pleasure of meeting in person, but judging by the looks of the kid, the parents must have been really hot. The strong Amiga influences are the reason why it has such an uncommon interface for today's standards, which turns out to be the greatest stumbling block for potential new users. And that's the, right, the reason why I'm here drawing your ears off, to explain you the basics of the interface and save you a failed Senate check the first time you fire it up. What I'm going to cover in this video are the most commonly used features, at least for me, which means the existence of modes, the toolbar, mouse click uses, key bindings and help, the screen size dialog, and the spare page. Don't worry if these terms and seem irrelevant yet because they're really simple and, in, and I'm just going to explain them right now. Point zero, modes. Graphics 2 has two main operation modes and those are layer mode, which is what we are, we are seeing right now, which lets you spot layers, and the animation mode that lets you animate. <coughs> Both modes use the animated GIF format, but the layers mode uses it in a non-standard way. Instead of sequentially displaying the frames, it overlays one on top of the other and gives them zero time or something, and there are simultaneous effective layers without a proprietary format. The layers mode is also the default edition mode for any sort of static pick because nobody is stopping you from having just one layer. Point one, the toolbar. The toolbar is this thing under here and it's the main part of graphics to interface. Anything can be, can be accessed from here or from some menu you can bring up from here. It has four main parts, which are the drawing tools, the edition tools, options and settings, and the Epalit property. I think I'm going to raise the proper thing. Right. So, within drawing tools, we have more or less the usual, which are brush selection, freehand drawing, lines, splines, spray, flat fill, polyforms, rectangles, gradients, and some moving around and adjusting the image. Within the edition tools, we have the copy-passing tools, which are very important. 
uh, general effects when drawing, brush effects, text insertion, the color picker, the zoom function, very important too. In options and settings, we have buttons to set the screen resolution to go to the spare page, to set global options, loading, saving, clearing the current screen, the help. And in the palette, we have a color selector, scrollable, and a palette mean. Oh, scary. That kinda covers the name. Well, oh, I forgot about something. Down here, we have a status bar, which so shows things like the name of your file, the coordinates of the cursor, CD, X, and Y. And over the and over it is either the layers bar, who lets you handle layers, or the animation bar, which lets you handle frames. You also have the option to hide or show it and selecting which other bar to use. Point two mouse stick uses. In graphics too, you'll always be using both the left and right mouse buttons, since they always or almost always do different things. When we're in the drawing area, or loaded file, whatever you want to call it, and using the left, the left mouse button, we'll draw <coughs> with a code that's selected as foreground color, and the right mouse button will we'll paint in the color selected as background color. That way you can use the, your right mouse button oops, I did the other way for racing or you know you can just paint with two colors at once. Holding the control key swaps the two temporarily. Uh, psychedelic and when painting that's about it you also select the colors with the two different buttons left click for selecting as foreground and right click for selecting as background it's quick like this also in the toolbar Hitting any of the buttons with the left mouse button, with the left click, you select whatever tool it is. But when hitting them with the right mouse button, you select between different sub tools or application modes. Whoops! What happened? What happened? Mm, so really, go mad clicking at everything with both mouse buttons because it always does something different. Probably the exception is the brush menu which comes up with the left mouse button. Everywhere else, left click activates. Uh, right click toggles or brings up an option menu. The other important mouse button function is the mouse wheel, which you can use directly whoops what I'm doing to access the zoom function. If you click on your mouse wheel or equivalent organ, you activate or deactivate the zoom function and if you roll your mouse wheel to set the zoom amount. You can do that also here. It's also an example of what I said previously. Left click activates or deactivates. Right click brings up options, which in this case just the zoom factor. Point three, key bindings and help. One of the more comfortable features of graphics too 
is that all key bindings can be easily reconfigured and when I say all, I mean them all of them. Uh, you should really learn them or remap them to something you're comfortable with because being agile with uh, hotkeys will will really speed up your workflow because your main hand will do what it's supposed to do with his painting and your left hand will handling a lot of different stuff. Uh, and all those key bindings can be reconfigured in one of the tabs in the help screen which can be accessed here. If you hit help you'll see this screen and this is all the key bindings for the program and they are both interactive and dynamic. That means that everywhere you see a key binding displayed like this, even in other screens, you can click it and change it on the spot and you can have up to two uh, key combos for each action. Whoops. I have my movement keys set like uh, in a shooter with W, with w A, S, T because it's a lot better than having to go to the other side of the keyboard to hit the arrow keys. That screen can also be accessed by F1, but the F1 button key, I mean, does something really magical too that is bringing up contextual help. If you hit F1 while hovering over a particular tool or interface element, you bring up a uh, contextual help that tells you what the tool does and how, how and lets you set the key binding too. So you just have to point a button and say oh I want to do that at the touch of a button and you can check it or change it. Ah. That's about it. Point four, the screen size dialog. Probably the first thing you'll do when you start with a new pick is setting its size to something appropriate and comfortable. That's done with this button and it's an action so common that the hot key for you is the enter button. Come on! Here you can manually set your picture size and there are also so a little bit more arcane options that can open up a portal to the 90s and have demons from hell power force, so don't touch them for now. It's that simple. Hit enter, set the numbers. Go! Oh. Point five, the spare page. As you have seen before, I have loaded two files and that's because one of the features of Graphics 2 is the spare page. Graphics 2 lets, loads up to two files and you can use them for different things. You can just have a reference pic or you happen to be editing two pics at once, you're working on a sprite sheet and the corresponding animation test, you can store in it temporary parts and it's also used for some more advanced tools like the mask tool. Really what I have used it the most is when I'm when I have animated sprites work at the same time on the sprite sheet and on an animation test. There are also some operations you can perform with both pages but we'll cover them at some other time. And I think that's all for now and time and motivation allowing I'll make some more and more advanced tutorials but until then, you're on your own.